Hello, this is Vitualis the Chess Noob, learning and having fun with chess. The Guaco Piano, or the Quiet Game, is a very common line in the Italian game. It is also a line that I feel apprehensive when playing against it as black. It's the quiet game as there tends not to be early trades and the game is highly positional. As the pressure builds, it might come down to who cracks first. In this game, my opponent and I were quite balanced in material, position, and errors and blunders. It was a battle to the end of the endgame. Please enjoy! Let's first start with the review, chess.com's algorithm. So, you know, we're reasonably balanced, some spikes here and there, you know, the, uh, the uh, bot reckons that this was a wild chaotic game, and I suppose it was because we both had a large number of blunders. So um, the opponent had five, I had four. We each had sort of a series of uh, good moves and great moves, and my opponent even had one brilliant move, which we'll see in context. Let's now have a look at the analysis. So I played black uh, in this game, um, my opponent white, and uh, this is the Italian, the Guaco Piano. So opponent leads with e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, uh, and I here played my second knight, so knight f6. d3, I developed my other bishop to c5. So. Um, this is the Guaco Pianissimo, or the Very Quiet game. Short castles, and I play d6, um, basically getting close to the end of my development. Opponent uh, develops their bishop to g5. The idea here is potentially pinning the knight to the queen. Responded with h6, asking the question, what exactly are they going to do? with that bishop. Now of course I would be quite happy to, um, to trade my knight for the queen as it would help with the queen's development. And here typically the opponent would either uh, play a uh, bishop to h4 or potentially bring the bishop back somewhere along this diagonal. Uh, opponent um, plays bishop e3 and he, at this point we are basically balanced. Um, so I chose not to capture uh, the uh, the bishop at this point, though that possibly was a slightly better move. Though you know, again, um, retreating my bishop to b6 um, that puts us back to equality, uh, but there's not a lot of difference uh, between the two. So potentially, if I did capture uh, that bishop, the opponent would capture back with pawn. So they have doubled their pawns, but you know, two pawns in the center is probably not a huge problem, and it does then open up the file for the opponent's rook. Uh, and I didn't really want to do that at this point. So I brought bishop to b6. Opponent develops their other knights, knight c3. Here I play knight a5, asking the question on what are they going to do with that bishop now. And the opponent um, here sort of counters with, uh, with knight to d5, uh, potentially attacking my, uh, my bishop. However, there's no reason why I wouldn't ju simply just capture at this point. Uh, Stockfish reckons uh, capturing the bishop first might have been better. Um, and the reason for that is this now sort of allows the bishop potentially to escape. So, um, but at this point, all we've done is traded a pair of knights, um, basically still equality. I play c6, uh, and here is where the opponent plays their brilliant move. So I thought this was a fairly clever move, uh, as you know, I'm threatening the bishop. Uh, bishop cannot go here or here, as those squares are protected by that knight. Um, doesn't make sense to go there, as it's protected by the bishop. Uh, and if the bishop captures the pawn, then of course I can capture back. Uh, with the king. However, what makes this move brilliant is that after capture, um, the opponent has this move b4, and my knight here is basically trapped. So there's, there's nowhere the knight can really go. And uh, so effectively, um, um, the opponent um, uh, has traded a bishop for a knight rather than losing the bishop outright. Uh, and I've lost the um, the ability to calm, to castle uh, on the king side. So potentially a, a reasonably good uh, good trade. And the position remains. 
basically equal. Here I make my first serious blunder and um, the reason uh, potentially uh, why uh, that is a blunder is that now the opponent immediately blunders back but what they could have done is capture that pawn with check. Uh, now they could have captured but then uh, the queen would have captured my bishop uh, uh, with development. So that potentially is quite good for white. However, the opponent chose to play h3. Uh, I was actually uh, potentially planning to do that because I wanted to um, you know, possibly sort of weaken the opponent's uh, king side defense. Uh, this was basically baiting that pawn to come forward and I was always going to bring that back, which is what I did to e6. Uh, and so here, um, you know, practically still equal. Now that strategy didn't work because the opponent did have that knight move, which they didn't see. Uh, they captured my um, that sort of hanging knight, which was fine. Captured back with bishop. Um, again, still very, very equal. Uh, they bring knight back to h2. I wasn't entirely sure of the logic and rationale there, I have to admit, uh, but I suppose that's fine for me. Uh, here I now sort of um, play bishop c3, so with the idea that it's now threatening the uh, the rook, and I thought that maybe at some uh, that, that there'll be some value in bringing that bishop back here as well, uh, and maybe trading bishops. Um, here, obviously, can't hang that pawn, push the pawn forward, um, and you know that is now supported. Um, uh, you know, so basically, still basically at equality. So very, very matched uh, and uh, from a material perspective, basically the same. Opponent plays f4, which was good. So attacking uh, attacking that pawn. Obviously if that capture that comes with check. Um, here I played uh, king e8, which was apparently a mistake. Um, according to Stockfish, the best move was to just straight up capture. Um, so I have to admit, I didn't see that. That doesn't seem like the most um, intuitive move to me, but you know, Stockfish is always right basically. They capture, I capture back with um, uh, with the with the bishop. Queen, um, queen checks, now I move my king out of the way, and obviously because I've lost the right to castle, I did have to move some of these pieces, uh, move the kings or manually, effectively. Um, they bring the knight back, and here I wasn't sure um, what was the best thing. So if they captured, I could capture back, but obviously then the queen captured. So I thought that was potentially a problem. And so uh, my, my the final decision I made was I might as well just do a peace trade uh, while, I will, while I can. Now the opponent, uh, sorry, the, uh, not the opponent, the computer actually didn't, didn't think that was the best move, suggested actually just moving the bishop out of the way. Now I suppose there is a logic there because even if the knight goes here, I can still just capture, that no longer makes sense for the knight. But I was seeing that knight would, uh, would come to to sort of e5 with check and I didn't like that so I opted to trade at this point. Opponent captures back with queen and here they are way 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 ahead, way 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 ahead. So move the king, uh, move the king to the side and here they make a potential major blunder by sort of bringing their bishop. So if, if the rook came to f7 uh, effectively um, you know the uh, you know, the, the king would be forced to move to this position uh, and then uh, the, the, the rook can go to uh, d7 supported by queen. Uh, effectively things are looking very, very bad. Basically I've lost a queen, I think, in that maneuver. However, my opponent didn't see that and I managed to find the correct move uh, in this position which was to give a check. And we're here from that absolutely losing position, managed to get back to equality. Now, should note that I didn't really uh, recognize that things were quite so grim, nor that things uh, went back to equality uh, with those series of moves. I thought we were probably equal, that I, though I did recognize uh, I did have some king safety issues. I brought rook to f8, uh, thinking that that might potentially pin that bishop to the rook. Um, apparently that wasn't the best move. Here um, they move the bishop uh, out of the way, uh, which 
it's a mistake, we're back to equality. The computer suggested uh, moving queen to d7 was the best move in the last move, and this is actually the move I found as well. I thought that the queen is very aggressive, uh, it's their most active piece, a lot of power. My queen wasn't doing very much, and in this position I felt that if I tr were able to trade queens, we probably were equal. Uh, I didn't see that the opponent had much of an advantage. So invited a trade of queens, and the opponent obliged. So I was actually quite happy. Um, now we trade rooks, and even better, they initiate a trade, which means I control the f file, uh, and as you can see, I am now ahead. So very rapid transformation there with a, probably a series of inaccurate moves by the opponent. The opponent now plays uh, bishop g1, threatening my bishop. Uh, here I was going for a bishop trade, but I do a mouse slip, <laughs> and I play bishop f2 rather than capturing all the way. Um, opponent now here plays best move, and basically I've just straight up lost that bishop because um, you know if if I uh, if uh, if they capture the, the king can just uh, cap capture back, but you know it's their move now, and in terms of their move, what they can straight up do is just to capture, and I will not be able to capture back because then I'll lose both my rook and bishop, and they'll have a rook remaining. So here I thought the, um, the best move for me was just to straight up capture their, uh, straight up capture the bishop to take the initiative, and if the opponent opted to capture, I would have the move where I could threaten the rook the next turn with a king move. However, they made a mistake by capturing back with the king rather than capturing with the rook, because that allows me now to liquidate all the pieces and maintain equality. So that was a serious blunder on my part, uh, and they could have just gone into the endgame a whole piece up. Uh, and, uh, and I think they blundered that series of moves by not uh, taking the initiative. And now we've got um, two pawns each here. Four pawns, four pawns. My king is one step ahead, so no, maybe I'm slightly ahead, and uh, and no, that's what sort of Stockfish thinks as well. So I sort of take uh, take a push forward. So do they? Uh, bring forward d5. Um, they capture capture back with king. So these three pawns are potentially supporting each other. Uh, king here is still on sort of the second rank, while here I'm the king is in the middle of the board. They try to move the king forward, which makes sense. Now, however, I play g5. I'm happy to see that was the best move. And the idea here is that the king blocks off those squares. At this point, blocks off those squares. So the king is sort of um, bounded. It, it's unable to move down. So I've created a barrier. They play g3, which is fine. I push um, uh, b5. The logic here is that I didn't want the opponent to be able to play c4 and push my king out of the way. Uh, they play h5, which was a serious blunder. Uh, and I sort of uh, sort of lose some of the initiatives. So my thinking here was that I wasn't worried about them pushing forward because uh, that would just end their initiative. If they captured, I would capture back and was still blocked. However, this was potentially a better move for me to capture because for the opponent's king to try to protect these pawns, it would have to move an extra square um, towards um, towards the um, uh, towards the uh, king side. So it would have been better for me to actually have captured at this point. But, you know, with these king and pawn endgames, it's often a little bit, you know, unclear to me. Uh, however, I am still ahead. Opponent captures, captures back, um, and things are still looking okay. So that transformation is still actually completely okay for me. So opponent so brings the king over. That gives me an opportunity to push the king forward. So the idea is now, uh, unless the king comes here, it cannot uh, it cannot sort of um, attack both my pawn and protect their pawns simultaneously. They choose to go for my pawn, which is probably the right move. Now I get to wipe out these pawns. Captures, 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 and now it's a matter of timing. And I am uh, ahead on pawns here. And if we look. I am one st step ahead. I queen first, but they queen right the next step. Now, very potentially, um, if you move the queen to the wrong error, you can stuff up and it can become a draw. And uh, I don't make the most accurate move. So here, uh, this would have been better. And basically, if you follow the perfect line, what happen ends up happening is if I keep trying to check the opponent's king, the king ends up being able to capture uh, that pawn eventually. So I lose some of my advantage. So they, however, don't play perfectly because we're humans and not robots. 
check again. And this again was a serious blunder. <laughs> again, I didn't see it as a blunder. Uh, you know, but basically back to equality. My goal was to try to keep checking, maybe potentially try to trade, uh, trade, uh, trade queens, and then potentially maybe maybe making another queen. However, here the opponent makes a serious mating blunder on their own uh, by moving the king onto the same diagonal as the uh, as their queen, now allowing for the terminal skewer. So here the opponent resigned. Clearly, with the next move, they would have lost their queen, uh, and I would have king queen. Um, possibly one or two pawns, you know, the opponent could choose a capture on the pawn. It doesn't make any difference with only a king uh, king left and me having queen and king. It's it's a guaranteed checkmate and it's not uh, it's not difficult to, to checkmate with king and queen. Opponent resigned, so tough game, you know, came all the way down to the end. We're almost equal the whole way despite a series of blunders, you know, they blundered, I blundered back. Good game, GG. This was a game with plenty of blunders. I was extremely lucky on at least about three occasions where my opponent didn't deliver a punishing and probably winning blow by exploiting my blunder. At the end, an inaccurate king move allowing for a skewer was what ended the game. Just like the video earlier in the week, it's not who blunders first or the most that matters, but who blunders last. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.